evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and I hope you're having a wonderful evening so far. Chatbox is not going to be weird this time. I made sure to kick that thing in the ass the other day. Consumption. I'm going to drink some water. I was thinking about biting into the grapefruit, but that would have been a little extreme to start things off on. Watch out now. Consumption has a limit now because of how it was abused last time. Remember, when you wield, when you wield such power in your hand, you must consider what you do with it. How it will affect the world around you. Things can be evil, negative, but positive. If you wield the power correctly, that's that makes the true individual. <laughs> you know it had a cooldown last time, right? It did have the cooldown, but now it's even better. It's even more nerfed. Oh, it's gonna get even better. I am very excited for this evening's cocktail tonight because it's using an ingredient that I'm more I recently brought into my collection called Mezcal. Which, you know, I haven't I haven't used it very much, but I've heard its name, like, kind of thrown around in, like, I, I would say the cocktail world, but I don't know if I'm really a part of, like, the cocktail world and stuff like that. But, uh, Mezcal is, like, tequila, except it's not completely blue agave and not, you know, made in the areas that, it's kind of like champagne, where, like, you can't call it champagne unless it's from a certain region of France, and you really can't, I don't think you can call it tequila unless it's from a particular part of Mexico. But mezcal is like all the other agave, like distilled fermented agave parts, specifically like the heart of the agave, that doesn't really fit into that category. And I'm sure there are laws surrounding mezcal too, but anyway, from what I've been told, actually I have tasted this before, it's like a smo a more smoky tequila. And by smoky, I mean it's kind of like, I would say it's almost like paint varnishy. Like if you've ever heard of a cocktail or rather a spirit that tastes peaty, peat, like the stuff that you use to like fertilize the ground. It's kind of got that, it's kind of got that smell to it. It's got that varnishiness to it. My, uh, the most expensive bottle of whiskey I think that I've ever had in my life. I didn't buy it myself. Somebody else bought it for me. Some, uh, it's a, it was a bottle that was labeled Lagavulin. It was like a $200 bottle of whiskey. And apparently the price was because of the smell and the taste. The smell and taste combined, it's kind of was like, you kind of stuck your face in the ground and then immediately took your face back out of like the, mo the mog and the mire and stuck it into a paint can. And supposedly some people find that rather enjoyable. Definitely understanding. Oh, absolutely. But so I haven't actually been able to use my mezcal in any particular cocktails yet because I just don't know many mezcal cocktails to begin with. It's not mentioned explicitly in a lot of the books that I have. So the cocktail I've got this evening is actually not from a book at all. It's not even from something that I found on the internet even. A little backstory here is that about a year ago, I don't remember what was, I think it was slightly before I even started streaming in general, I was just kind of like browsing through the internet and whatnot, specifically r slash bartenders on Reddit. And I came across somebody who posted a little picture of one of their one of their drinks and was like, hey, I'm a struggling bartender here because COVID's like closing all the bars and whatnot. And if you drop me a dollar, here's my Venmo, I'll send you some recipes. And I was like, you know what? I'm feeling kind. So I, you know, I threw a dollar, I tipped my bartender in this case, and he sent me a couple of recipes, as I'm sure he did for a lot of other people. And so one of the, I've got like a, I think it was like at least two, almost, I think some two dozen recipes in there that I have not, I haven't been able to try any of them except for I think one. And one of the things that I was blocked off for, one of the reasons I was blocked off from doing at least one of them was because I didn't have mezcal for the longest time. And I think I got this about a month or two ago. I, I don't, you know, I don't usually do much drinking of my liquor bottles unless I do it in a cocktail, usually behind the camera, sometimes other than that. But as you can see, there's really, there's still quite a lot back in there. I don't, I don't use my liquor bottles very much. It's interesting that when I share with friends and family about the amount of liquor that I have in my apartment, they're usually like, do you have a problem? Is, is that the reason why you have so many, many bottles? And I'm like, yes, I do have a problem. I apparently don't use enough I don't have enough mixes and drinks that I do with them because they're always relatively full and I run out of them like very, very, very slowly, which is kind of the point. It'd be cool if you had tagged him to watch you make it. I feel uncomfortable doing stuff like that. This was like over a year ago and I don't even know if he remembers me specifically. I'm sure he got quite a few tips from a lot of other people. In general, I mean, from what I understand, and I don't want to do like real names or anything like that because I don't know, you know, who's out there trying to be creepy or whatever, but he goes by the Cinnamon Sphinx, at least on the, on, on, you know, on his Venmo, and, which is a form of social media now. It's weird that I can go through Venmo and it's like a social media app. I can see like, oh, my buddy just sent rent to his landlord or, oh my God, look at that. Somebody paid somebody else for gas. That's interesting. 
legit complains about how he needs more alcohols to mix. I mean, to be fair, to be fair, there are a lot of bottles, but it's not a comprehensive collection of bottles. I, for example, don't have a lot of specialty like Italian liqueurs and whatnot. I don't have any sweet vermouth. I gotta get myself some sweet vermouth. I just ran out of that the other day. I don't have a lot of like the, the bitter, like I think it's either an aperitif or a digestif. I don't remember the difference between the two. I think aperitif is the sweet one. Digestif is the, is the bitter one. I think, I don't know. Get a bottle of screwball. Dude, the peanut butter whiskey, which when I tried it the one time wasn't super peanut buttery, but they sell some screwball. They do, they do down here. I just, uh, what I need to find, apparently, is I need to find myself a nice peanut butter whiskey cocktail. Or I just like, I don't know, maybe I get, I wonder if there's a way that I could just like, better yet, what if I take the peanut butter whiskey and I put peanut butter inside of it and I infuse it that way and then like make my own peanut butter whiskey based peanut butter liqueur. That sounds awesome actually. Apparently makes good for mixes. Oh, oh, I believe it, I believe it. I think I had it on my own once, like just on itself, and I was like, this isn't really peanut buttery to me. I don't know if I, I don't know if I would call this peanut butter whiskey. And I tried it with my, to be honest, and I don't remember if it was screwball, but it actually tasted more like, but whatever peanut butter whiskey I had, tasted more like butterscotch than anything else, but eh, you know, to each their own. I don't know. Anyway, so we're gonna kick this off from with a recipe from a stranger on the internet who, as uh, circa a year ago, was, I guess, struggling a little bit to the point where they wanted to spread the love and get a little cash with it. But you know what? There ain't no shame in that. No shame in that. I almost broke everything. But it's okay. Nothing is broken. And look at that. My table's clear. That's what I get for trying to be fancy. Look at that. All right. In my cocktail shaker, I need some ice. That was legitimately a close one. That could have been really, really bad. But we live on. We move on. And everything's fine now. Nobody saw that. Great. Golden. Let's put a big old cube in here. I'm gonna crush it up first so I don't like make mistakes and stuff. I'm trying not to. I still I still wind up getting ice everywhere, but you know what? This is some of the best parts here. Ayo, Dakota, how are you doing? I got a little beat going on here for you. Okay, I don't hurt myself. I'm still still getting into the still trying to get better at cracking ice, so I'm gonna um I'm gonna give it a couple more whacks. And yeah, I'm just gonna drop it in there. I have a feeling it's all on the bar spoon, and I just don't have the right bar spoon. And I'm a cheater, so because that one wasn't really cracked up to a point where I was satisfied with it, I got a couple of small ice cubes here. One, two, three. Hey, yeah, let's get them. Let's get them. Alrighty then. Well, so, this particular cocktail that I've got in store for everybody this lovely evening from the Cinnamon Sphinx himself is called Floridita number 846. And I always think to myself, one of the things that I really don't usually do is attempt to figure out, like, you know, why the heck a cocktail is named any particular thing, or whether that matters or not. But I actually did a little bit of searching on this one, and it seems that Floridita number 846 is actually a reference to another drink that I very much love called the Hemingway Daiquiri. The history behind, at least from what I could find on the internet about Floridita, is the fact that apparently Hemingway, uh, Adam, I believe he was, a, he, was a, he was a very prolific writer, loved to also drink, so much to the point where apparently he had a drink named after him. And he also would frequent a bunch of bars, I guess, around, I don't know, United States type North America area. And one of those bars that he frequented and was rather pleased with was a place in Havana, Cuba called Floradita. To the point where, I guess the bar or the people who knew about him going to the bar named a drink after him, the Floradita. Floridita number 846, which I have written my little post-it note here, is is different. It's a spin on the Hemingway daiquiri, but it's also different all on its own when it uses different ingredients, and it's it's interesting. And we'll we'll see that as we go through it. How Dakota's doing all right. The gaming shell broke, and you can't fix it. Oh my gosh! I have a big old wrench to try to help you out with that. And although I can't like specifically come over there and fix your gaming chair with the power of the wrench and a good bit of hydration. And maybe we'll all be able to fix the metaphorical gaming chairs in our life. I, I have a real gaming chair. Uh, it's a, you know, it's not, it's, it, I, I feel like my chair at work is actually more comfortable than that. Oh, Anna's got to study. R.I.P. R.I.P. indeed. So the first ingredient that I'm going to add to this glass, because it was the first one listed on the list, usually whenever I find a recipe, I usually just go from top to bottom. I've been trained because of like a bartending class that I took that really didn't matter. It was okay. It was nice, nice people. 
they're to, to be like, if you see them in a particular order, that's the order in which you're supposed to mix it in. Although not everybody follows that rule, but I'm going to do it anyway, because that's what we have here. So the first two things, I, and I'm going to do this in double proportions too, because I have a rather large glass and I want to fill the whole thing up so that it looks super duper pretty. So the first thing that I got to add is some saline solution. Saline solution is really easy to make, and I put it in this little bottle over here. It's a little, little pipette thing that Anna apparently used all of the chemical in. Uh, the chemical has been since washed out, and now it's just got H2O plus NaCl, aka table salt and water together for a little saline solution. It calls for two dashes of saline. I, I can't really dash with a pipette, so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that a dash is like the equivalent of like, let's say a quarter of this vial full, and every single time I kind of pull up from it, I get about half a vial. So I'm going to go with one half vial and then another half vial of saline solution. And I don't think I need any more than that because I literally put a bunch of salt in a little, little container, tiny little container, and shook it up with water. And when it couldn't absorb any more salt, I dumped out the rest of the salt. So this is a very, very salty solution, a.k.a. saline which I believe that, I think saline solution is also used in like medicine and whatnot. I think they use that to try to, uh, it hydrates your body somehow. I don't exactly know the, the medical like mentality behind all of that, but I believe the doctors make it work. I understand like the physics, it's got something to do with like osmosis and stuff like that and gradients, uh, chemical gradients and whatever. But alas, I didn't come here to lecture on physics or anything. I am not qualified to do that. I came here to take alcohol one plus alcohol two and make them into alcohol two, alcohol, alcohol three. That's how math works. See, I can't even do math right now. The second ingredient I need, in addition to saline solution, which recall I'm doing double proportions, so I'll, I'll make things, I'll, I'll explain things properly, is you'll need three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of grapefruit juice. I will be using 1.5 ounces consumption. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna tell you how salty this thing is. It's salty saline. Oh my god. Oh, that's consumption, all right. You know, supposedly, supposedly, the reason why you're not supposed to drink salt, that literally tastes like I just put my mouth into the ocean. Oh, if you put a little bit in the back of your mouth, when you got a little sore throat, you just like gargle it up. And supposedly you'll feel better. It's never worked for me, but alas, you, you know. Mother knows best, I suppose. So the next thing I need is some grapefruit juice. So naturally, I have some grapefruits. I don't know where I put it. Found my grapefruit. It's over here. This grapefruit... Actually, no, it wasn't the grapefruit that almost caused the destruction of my bottles. It was my shakers. God, what would I have done if I actually broke the bottles? I guess I'd have to make another cocktail on the spot. My goodness. When Astro gives blood, you give double the amount because you're an O positive. Oh, you got the stuff that they all want. You got the good, you got the good blood there. I'm an A positive blood type, so, you know, it's not, you know, it's nothing special, but it's positive. I'm a positive person. hey -o. So let's take this grapefruit here. I'm gonna cut it in half. And what I'm gonna do too is I'm, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to use the grapefruit as a garnish later on. So I'm actually gonna cut a wheel off of this grapefruit and see if I can actually use that as a garnish uh, for the rest of the drink. I don't know if it's gonna work the way that I want to because the grapefruit is rather a bit of a thick boy, a little bit of a thick fruit. So I don't, I don't know if it's gonna work out the way that I want it to, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. I usually don't garnish with an entire grapefruit. And just to prove that it's a grapefruit. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a pink one, all right. It looks just damn beautiful. Mm. Astro's got the second blood there. Oh, he's wanting. Oh, for sure, for sure. I think, I think Anna has O blood, I think, if I recall. I don't know, is that, is that like, is that personally identifiable information of giving your blood type? Like, am I accidentally doxing myself? I don't know, I don't know. The world should know, the world should know that if they find my driver's license, me, the one and only Karen with an X, that, that they should know what my blood type is. Actually, well, I guess if they found my driver's license, they would already know what my blood type is because it says on there what my blood type is. And it also says that I'm an organ donor as well. I won't need my body after I'm done with it. You can give it to somebody else, little bits and pieces and whatnot. I was actually inspired to become an organ donor by an anime I watched when I was younger called Angel Beats. Good, good, good show. Very, very, very good show. All right, I'm gonna save this piece of, save this piece of, piece of grapefruit for later. Put a little cut in it. I'm gonna try to use that. And I got a backup plan in case that doesn't work because I have a strange, strange feeling that it just ain't gonna work the way that I want it to. 
let's put that yeesh we'll put that over here we'll put that over here on my little side table oh so we got oh negative is the best donor one some religions make it blasphemy to do it to donate for some reason really i don't i don't really i don't vibe with that personally personally i don't vibe with that i mean i think of it this way your body is a factory that's constantly pumping out things that can help somebody else. And if you're just hogging it all for yourself, then maybe that's a little selfish. But there's also like other considerations there. For example, like being like, like definitely afraid of like needles and blood and stuff like that. It's got a, it's got an ew factor to it. And I totally understand why you might not want to because of that ew factor. Anyway, let's juice this grapefruit or at least attempt to, I don't know. I, I don't have a, I don't specifically have like a grape juice squeezer. I have, I have an orange squeezer that I can just like use a grapefruit on. I think the grapefruit's a little too big, but you know, it's it mostly, actually it's getting most of the juices out like that. Oh, and I just remembered too, supposedly consumption. I'm going to lick the inside of the grapefruit <laughs> or I'm just going to eat it. It was actually very tasty today. Hmm. Not very, not very hydrating. So I'm going to go back to this. Hmm. Delicious. The, ooh. Like Jehovah's Witnesses don't receive or give blood. That's very interesting. I'd want to know too, just out of kind of like a, for the sake of like information, like what's the reason behind it? I wonder why it is so blasphemous. I'd always be curious. Like I, I got, I got mad respect for anybody who can like hold towards any particular religion. I'm not an incredibly religious person. So like if you're, if you're very religious and you stick to it, I respect that. And as a very religious gal, she sticks to it. I right, love her for that. But I, for one, like, I just, I don't know. There's something about the idea of, like, like really getting behind something that's kind of, like, hard to see, hard to touch that just, I don't know, it's difficult for me. But, like, I always wonder for, like, particular, like, sects of religion or different different beliefs and ideologies that the reason why anything is per particularly blasphemous or taboo or totally allowed, I always wonder what the reason why is. Because I know, like, I feel like, you know, if, if you understand, if you come from a point of attempting to understand, then we can all peacefully coexist, or at least attempt to. Sometimes peace is not an option. Some people just don't like peace. And in which case, I gotta say, I gotta say, like, maybe try to find a common ground, but, you know, you got, you know, different strokes, different folks. Y'all do your own thing. There's no, no didn't stop you from that. I mean, I grew up, Astro grew up Mormon, so feel free to ask about those if you want. I don't know too much about Mormonism, except for the fact that apparently they had a, they had a pretty killer musical about their book, which uh, I don't know too much about the Book of Mormon. I've just been told it's a really, really awesome show. And eventually, I will watch it. And actually, what I'm doing this weekend is I'm going to see a musical called Hades Town. It was apparently a very, very wonderful musical, and I think it won awards, maybe? I don't remember. What were we doing again? We were making a cocktail. I'm adding, um, the recipe calls for originally two dashes of saline and originally three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of grapefruit juice. I'm going to add 44 milliliters, AKA 1.5 ounces to this because I'm trying to make enough to fill up my big old container. So I'm down with that. One and a half ounces. I think I probably have enough grapefruit juice from this, or if not, then I'm sure I got pretty damn close. All right, I'm trying to get as much juice out of there as possible. Yeah, look at that. All right. Now that, one and a half ounce, one and a half ounces in the shaker. All right, take that and put that away. All right, what do we got? That musical is hilarious. The, uh, uh, the, the, the Book of Mormon, nice. Are you going to strain the pulp? Nah, we'll strain it afterwards. This whole thing gets double strained at the very end. So we'll be straining some pulp. Ain't no pulp here. Ain't no pulp in my grapefruit. No way. The next ingredient that I'll see is some elderflower liqueur. Yo, what is this? You rated Neko. Hello, everybody. Neko rated D. Look at the party parrot going on up there. I freaking love that. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's cocktail time. We're doing something a little different. If you're a fan of tequila or agave in general, this is the star of our show today. Mezcal. Mezcal, mezcal, mezcal. I feel like there's a pun to be made about mezcal, but I just can't think of any right now. I just can't. In any case, how is it going? Everything's been going pretty well. Today, this week at work has been smooth ride so far. The boss is kind of doing his own thing. He's not really checking up on me. I get to be an independent and responsible worker, which, you know, feels, it feels good. It feels pretty good. And I was, I was comfy at work today. I decided I got this, uh, I got this Lily Pichu shirt from a, a, fa a future family member of mine. I love it. It is a very comfy shirt. Would highly recommend. Actually, I don't know if they sell these anymore. I've heard the jacket is a really, really good thing. Ooh, excuse me. 
So another interesting difference about this particular Hemingway daiquiri cousin type drink is the fact that it shared a couple of commonalities with a Hemingway daiquiri, such as the grapefruit juice, but it does a little something different. So usually, and I think the next ingredient is like an a, like attempting to be like the analog of this other ingredient in the Hemingway daiquiri. Usually a Hemingway daiquiri is made with lime juice. And although this other one isn't, you know, it isn't a juice, I think it actually uses lime juice. I'm pretty sure it does. I could be wrong about that. But this one, instead of using the lime juice in addition to the grapefruit juice, it uses elderflower liqueur. And usually, like, the de facto elderflower liqueur that I can find at my liquor stores usually is something called St. Germain, S-T-G-E-R-M-A-I-N, or Saint Germain, as some people to choose to pronounce it. I couldn't find any of that the last time I was at my liquor store looking for elderflower liqueur, so I had this, I had this little more affordable, cheaper, bulls, Elderflower liqueur. It's very, very sweet. I don't exactly know how sweet Saint Germain, Saint Germain happens to be comparatively, but I'm sure, I'm sure it's a lovely. If you have it, cool. If you don't, I'm sure you could find something else. Neko's going to make tacos with homemade, tor homemade tortillas. Enjoy the bartending. I absolutely will, and I hope those tacos go well. How appropriate. Tacos and tequila cousin? Sort of, kind of? Hmm. Well, if you got any, that'd be good. Honestly, Although this particular cocktail does not use lime juice, the Hemingway Daiquiri, I believe, does also use lime juice. And lime juice, I think, goes very, very well with tacos. Or if you're making any guacamole, love to see that. So, on the notion of very funny flower liqueurs, we've got the elderflower liqueur, which the recipe calls for a quarter of an ounce or seven milliliters. I'm gonna use double that, so half an ounce or about 14, 15 milliliters of this elderflower liqueur. Bulls. Bolus is my particular spirit of choice this time, particular spirit manufacturer of choice. We'll put a half an ounce in there and see how that goes. And lo and behold, it goes well. It actually made it to the bottom of the shaker. I'm glad that there's no holes in the... Wouldn't it be funny if there was a hole in the bottom of my shaker? Actually, to be honest, and you probably can't tell very well, but the bottom of this shaker has like a little, like, little lip on it that you can kind of see on the way around. This side of the shaker used to have that, but it's kind of like, you can see it's a little dulled on the bottom. It's because <laughs> what I tried to, what I tried to do is I really, really tried to practice like taking a, a full cocktail shaker like this, shaking it around, flipping it up in the air and catching it. I'm really not that good at that. And so what I wound up doing was I did that enough times where this thing hit the floor way too many times, specifically the, the back patio of my parents' house, and it just came apart. It just totally broke. Actually, I, it might have actually broken right here. Hump day drinking. What's up, Throbbing Dew? It is hump day, and we are drinking. I'm currently drinking water because the cocktail's not made yet, but, you know, you could be doing your life differently. And if you are, we love to see it. We like uniqueness around here. It's always a good time to hydrate. Oh, what did I just do? Messing up again. I added my elderflower liqueur, which was Bulls. Bulls, B-O-L-S. I love the sound of that liqueur bottle. Bulls Amsterdam, 1575, 100% natural. Did you shut up up there? I'm trying to do a cocktail stream over here, buddy. Crazy. 100% natural in a bottle. I don't know. There's something There's something extremely natural about this particular color, but by natural, I see, oh, consumption. Oh. By natural, I mean it look, kind of looks like it came out of an actual living creature. It kind of looks like urine in a bottle. It sounded like a boat. Honestly, if I just took sound segments of the city around me, I'm sure people would be like, oh, do you live by the, you live by like the water or something? It always sounds like there's boats over there. No, it's not boats. It's just a bunch of way too small mufflers that make everything sound like <laughs> stuff. It's crazy. The next ingredient that I need in my cocktail shaker is maraschino or maraschino liqueur. I, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. I've heard it both ways, but I'm gonna call it maraschino because it sounds funny and I don't usually hear people that way. Do you live inside a car? Do I live inside a car? City folk questions. I don't live inside a car. Actually, I do have a car, but my car's not in the city right now. We use my fiance's car. It's smaller and much easier to parallel park. Honestly, <laughs> if I tried to pack all of the stuff here in a car, it would have to be one of those like like uh, interdimensional like clown cars and stuff. The fact that you can fit more into it than it seems like you can. Basically, TARDIS car. I'm not a big Doctor Who fan, but I do know what a TARDIS is, and I would need an actual TARDIS car in order to fit all of the worldly belongings that I have in this apartment. And of course, they all have to be accessible, specifically the mixology ingredients, because if I don't have those, well, I can't do stuff like this. 
like add maraschino liqueur to my cocktail. I'm gonna need a quarter ounce of that as well. Quarter ounce, I'm adding two. I'm doubling things up so I can fill up my glass. Quarter ounce, just as a reminder, is seven milliliters. Half an ounce would be 14 or 15. I think it rounds up to 15 actually quite nicely. So let's add half an ounce of that into my cocktail shaker. Let's go for it. What was that? Mufflers. Mufflers make funny, funny sounds. Mufflers do make funny sounds. Oh, love that. I love the smell of maraschino liqueur. It's just like, supposedly maraschino smells like cherries. I don't think it smells like cherries. I don't think it smells like cherries at all. It kind of smells like, like, oh my God, I'm trying to describe it. Like, if a taste, if something can feel tingly, like you can feel tingly with your fingers. You can taste tingly on your tongue. This would be like, I would say the equivalent of like a tingly, but for your nose. Almost like, like, like if you smell like a chemical, it could be like a little bit tingly, but it's not like, like unpleasantly chemical. It's like a sweet chemical. That's what I think it kind of smells like. But it's also, I guess, if you had to pick a fruit to liken it to cherries, I guess. Cherries, more like the pit of the cherry, maybe even the skin of the cherry, but alas. I digress. The final ingredient that I will need in this concoction, co cocktail, oh my god, I was trying to make some funny words there. Cocktail concoction, concoctional cocktail, concoctional combination is mezcal, the star of our show. The star of our show today, mezcal. Mezcal, as I said before, is kind of like, it's a, it's a cousin of tequila, except it doesn't use 100% blue agave. It's just like a combination of other agaves. Usually, I think I watched a YouTube video on it once, Mezcal is usually made by taking, like, and the agave plant kind of looks like a big, like, aloe vera, and there's this little, like, crux in the center, this little core they call the, an agave heart. And so what they do is they, they chop off all the leaves and stuff, and they have this heart that's sitting there in the center, and they kind of shave it a little bit more, and I think they kind of set these things on fire and let them hang onto the ground for a while, and they kind of smoke themselves. And then you take that, and it's got sugars in it and whatnot, which allows for the fermentation process to do, and then you do some distillation to get it high up in alcohol content. That's how we do it. Caucasian cocktail concoction. I am Caucasian. The cocktail is not, I don't think. It is cocktail and it is concocting. We are mixing things together and that's just how it be. Or maybe I'm the Caucasian cocktail concoction. But I don't have alcohol in me yet, so can you really call me a cocktail? But some people tend to call mocktails cocktails, so if that, by that definition, maybe I'm a cocktail concoction. I'm a cocktail concoction of my two parents' DNA genes all mixologically combined together into this beautiful Caucasian figure that you see before you self-confidence caucasian cocktail combination with self-confidence i like that there's a little bit of alliteration there Ooh, c's all across the board this particular I, i've been making it a habit of attempting to see what this what is on the back of these bottles and usually there's a little bit of a story to be had here so in particular the mezcal that i have is del maguey vida de san luis del rio mezcal artesanal which i suppose means artisanal mezcal and the back says vida Del Magui Single Village Mezcal brings you a collection of artisanal and ancestral mezcals from the lush remote mountains, plains, and valleys of Oaxaca, Mexico. Vida de San Luis del Rio was first introduced to the world in 2010. It is an amazing base for cocktails and even better sipped and savored. It is traditionally handcrafted from 100% mature agave espadine by the family of Paciano Cruz Nolasco Vida. Oh, no, is that Paciano Cruz Nolasco? Vita has an ar aromatic nose of tropical fruit with hint of honey and taste of ginger, cinnamon, any bit of tangerine with a long, smooth finish. I don't have a very refined palate, so I don't know if I agree with any of that, but I believe it. If somebody tells me that's what it is, I'm gonna believe you because I don't know otherwise. Personally, right off the top, it kind of smells like somebody was like burning a piece of wood like in the corner of the room. Like if I were to walk into a room that may have had like a, some sort of fire going, I'd be like, it's a little mezcal -y. Or this smells a little smoky kind of woody. It smells more woody than it did the first time I opened it, so maybe a little, maybe it oxidized a little bit. That's kind of cool. I love stuff like that. I love it when things change over time. The only constant thing about life is the fact that we will always experience change, and I kind of like that. So I'm gonna add uh, one and a half ounces for the first dose. You know, I'm doubling things up. One and a half ounces is usually at 45 milliliters, and now I'm gonna add another one and a half ounces, making it three ounces, which is about 90 milliliters, so I can fill up my cocktail glass. I probably will have a little bit left over, but that's just an enjoyable, uh, just an enjoyable left bit of leftovers that I'll be able to have tomorrow or the day after or whenever I decide to get around these things. Oh, 
no smelling more concocted. Kokaki? Kokaki? Pretty sure you butchered that spelling. That's okay. Speaking of spelling and stuff, has anybody out there been playing Wordle? <laughs> My coworkers play Wordle now, and they got me hooked onto it. And apparently, there's an even harder version out there called Quartal. Quartal is in Quattro, like the number four, where you actually have four different puzzles all at the same time. And instead of having, I think, what is it, the five guesses you have normally for one, you get nine guesses total to guess all four of the words. It's difficult. I didn't want to get into it, but I somehow got into it. So here we are, and now I'm a Wordler and a Quartaler. And the New York Times has taken my wordle from me. Very sad. Very sad. So, let's shake this guy up and see what we do. See what we get from that. I'm still working on my proper shaking form. Any tips are greatly appreciated. All right, cool. So now, ooh, that is making a funny sound. It's a funny little squirting sound. That's funny. All right, so the next step is to double strain this into a cocktail glass. Allow me to make my setup so we can get a nice little close-up. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. A little close-up of this. Takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of time. Tip is to shake it like you're trying to shake your booty up. But I am trying to shake my booty up. There's no try, it's do or do not. There is no try here. I am gonna shake my booty up. <laughs> Although, to be fair, if I shook my booty all the way up, then... Hmm. Wrong shaking. Oh, is that for, like, twerking? Hmm. I don't know about that. Let's get all up close here. I kind of wish... I'm still working on, like, camera techniques and stuff like that, but it'd be really, really cool if all I had to do was, like, click a button. Like, bam! There you go. Like, button click, and it just fades to this, like, instantly, instead of having to, like, slowly but surely zoom in on it. Anyway, let's, uh, let's double strain this. I have a strainer. I have another strainer. Where's my other strainer? Where's my other strainer? Put that up on top. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. Double strain. Put it in there. Try to see how high I can get that. That's beautiful. I love it. What a beautifully, what a beautiful pink color. I was honestly thinking that the color of the mezcal, which I thought was a little bit darker, was gonna overtake it, but that is like a beautiful pink color. And it looks like I made just enough, which is great. And look at that. There's a little bit of pulp stuck in the net. Exactly what we were hoping for. All right, put that to the side. That's lovely. Oh, does that smell good? Ooh, oh man. Oh, that smells like smoke. You know what I was just saying about the smokiness of the mezcal? That taste, that smells smoky, my man. That's smoky business. It smells awesome, my God. Like pink lemonade, although I'm sure it does not taste anything like that. Let's see if I can get this a little bit. Closer. There we go. Smoky? Smoky like Smoky the Bear? Well, I mean, Smoky ate around here. Although I'm sure Smoky the Bear could have a nice conversation with some people that I know who leave crockpots on when you're out of the apartment or stoves on out of the apartment. Not me. Not in my house. Just got here. What does it taste like? I don't know yet. I haven't garnished it yet. I can't taste it just yet. Although I think I have. Where's my garnish? There we go. Let's see. So according to uh, the original uh, tag, the person, Cinnamon Sphinx, who originally very, very happily gave me this recipe after I tipped him, according to him, who was the creator of the recipe, the Floridita number 846, you should garnish it with, um, with expressing of a grapefruit. Like you could express like a grapefruit wheel over it. And although I don't really want to do the expression of a grapefruit, I would much rather what I'd much rather do is I just put a little grapefruit wheel on it and it actually looks pretty good. I like that. It's pretty and it's pink. Some sugar or salt would be really pretty. Yeah, you know, come to think of it. So like, usually, usually you can like salt the rim of like a margarita and this one's more close to like a daiquiri. I, I think I think it's more close to a Hemingway daiquiri. And to be honest, I don't know too much about like, like what deter, what discerns like a daiquiri away from other particular beverages aside from like the glass you put it in this is supposed to go on a smaller coupe or nicanor glass but i've got a margarita glass so that's just what i put it in but i feel like salt around the room would be really nice here there was actually a little bit of salt actually well, let me let me recollect the recipe again just so everybody's on the same page the floridita number 846 by at tag cinnamon sphinx calls for two dashes of saline three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of grapefruit juice quarter of an ounce or seven milliliters of elderflower liqueur recommended saint germain i had something different a quarter of an ounce or seven milliliters of maraschino liqueur and one and a half ounces or 45 milliliters of mezcal 
Mine's a very smoky mezcal. Yours may not be. Mezcals are apparently one of those spirits that just like, it, it varies wildly depending on what type that you get. I, for one, have a smoky one, because that's the one thing. There's like three mezcals that they sell at my particular liquor, liquor store, and this was the prettiest bottle. Actually, when I found this particular bottle, it didn't have a late, all the other ones were priced. This one didn't have a price label on it, so I was like, maybe I'm taking the right bet to buy a cheap one. Now it was like 50 bucks. But it's good mezcal. It's damn good mezcal. Let's see how that, let's see how that tastes. That's lovely. I love the way that looks. Oh my God. All right, let's see how it tastes. Floridita number 846. I always love, it's so interesting to find, to, to be able to try drinks that are made by just people in general. Like, I want to know, it's really interesting now that I think about it to wonder like where the inspiration for the drink came from or what was going through this person's life when they decided to create the create. But do you ever really decide to create or does creation just happens? I don't know. F, hope this stream makes 50 bucks. Oh, no, 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 no. I was more, I needed this anyway, so. Proceeds to gamble on price fines, something not cheap, but tastes great. Oh, I would say, I don't know if it tastes great. I don't know if it's my particular flavor. Yo, welcome to the party there, Belaxo. Belaxo, I love that name. I'm gonna put on a tiny little party after you, Belaxo, because that's what we do around here when people join the party. Oh my goodness. Hopefully, in addition to that new follow that you have and notifications you get when the stream goes live, hopefully you get a cocktail recipe out of this. I'd like to see that happen. Consumption, we also stay hydrated. Oh my goodness, wait a minute. Oh, heck yeah, hat. Well, that's what we do. I'm gonna consume, I'm gonna use my consumption this time on the cocktail because I wanna see what this, this tastes like. I feel like, how long have they been talking for? I've been talking for like a half hour now and I haven't even sipped the alcohol. Goodness gracious. All right. The Floridita number 846, Mezcal Forward. Interesting. Oh, that is wild. That is a really, really wild flavor. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is what I'm getting here. The first thing I get is the mezcal, obviously. It's like, there's like three ounces of this in here. I did a little double take for myself and it's it's awesome. It isn't super duper overpowering at all. It's not incredible. I feel like if you sip into like a whiskey, sometimes it can hit you real hard. It doesn't hit you very hard at all. It's actually very smooth. And I don't know if that's because of the mezcal itself or maybe it's because of everything else that's going on around it, but it's awesome. The second thing I get, and this is a flavor combination I don't think I've ever, I've ever imagined before. It's the smokiness of the mezcal combined with like the pungentness of the elderflower liqueur, which I did not see coming at all. It is crazy. Been following for like a year now almost and you enjoyed every single show. I like that. It seems real chill and fun. I like your vibes, Bill Axel. The fact that you come in here and say good vibes. I have a fan. Actually, I have a fan on my wall over there. It's a rainbow and it's got incursive on it. Good vibes. And every so often I like to look at that and think to myself, are we doing good vibes here? I certainly hope so. But you know what? Even if we don't got good vibes, that's why we've got the company as others. That's why we've got all this stuff. All, all, all you guys. All you use guys and use gals. That's great. We're all your good vibe fans. I love that. But so... The combination of the smokiness. Cheers! Cheers! You know what we do for cheers? <laughs> we have party horns. <laughs> it's a party vibe. <laughs> oh my god, that was so cool. I think I actually did it into... I think I did, actually did that into the cheer notification. That was so cool. <laughs> I love this new setup. Previously, there was a border around everything. I couldn't reach beyond the border, but now I'm in the border. I can feel the border. I love this. Mario Sunshine? I can't believe you missed it. Oh my god. I actually... I've been getting inspiration from our buddy Astro Rock over here who plays who also plays Mario Sunshine every once in a while, but on like like this chaos mod. It looks awesome, and I'm actually quite inclined to try that out myself. It seems very, very interesting. Uh, because I want to go back to Super Mario Sunshine. I've like played the entire day on that one. Oh my god, what a great game. Every so often I get inclined to just, you know, stream a whole day game of just something I like from my childhood. I'm I'm still not that far away from my childhood. I'm only 24. I'm really not that far, but it's it's great. It's not too difficult to set up. I think you use Dolphin, the GameCube em emulator, right? I just downloaded that for myself the other day. Haven't tested it out yet because apparently it takes a little while for GameCube ROMs to download. I don't know where they're being downloaded from, but there's some pretty heaping big files, like half a gig. That's that's a lot. But then again, it's to be expected, I suppose. Let me give this another try. Wow. That is super duper interesting. It's just like... This hits me 
differently than anything else I've had before. So I can't really, I feel like if something hits you and it's totally foreign to you, it's very, very difficult to like describe what those flavors are. And this is like, I, I, don't, I don't think I've had anything like this before. Something about elderflower, which is already pretty foreign to me, and smoky, smoky mezcal, smoky mezcal. It's like so different to me. I gotta, where's the other stuff in there? There's also grapefruit juice in there. There's a sweetness. The sweetness must be coming from um, either a little bit from the maraschino, or probably the grapefruit juice. Honestly, there's a little bit of saline solution in there too. I don't get much salt, or maybe I do. I think I do get a little bit of salt in there. There's like, there's a little bit of a dryness that I feel on my tongue. And I don't, I, I think that's coming from the mezcal. I don't think that's coming from the dryingness of the saline solution. I'm pretty sure it's the mezcal, but I could be very wrong on that. I don't know. I, Annie has used dolphin before and it's pretty easy. Yeah, I haven't actually run the thing yet. I need to, I need to though. Also, I find it awkward. I have my, I have my chat looker over here. I <laughs> on my television actually, um, but the chat's over here. Uh, that's something that I'm aware of and will eventually fix. It's nobody's problem except for my own. I'm just very nitpicky about it. Oh, and then, and then, oh, you can send me the good mod site and then you can send me where to go for setting up the chaos version. Oh, much appreciated. I look forward to, to, to seeing that happen. Awesome. Well, that went down the wrong way. That is freaking delightful. I think, I think I actually haven't, I haven't tried this mezcal any more than just like a little sip of it from a shot glass. Actually, I think I took a shot of it maybe. That might've been the only thing I've done with this mezcal so far. Wow. God, did I not realize what I was missing? That is awesome. That is super duper cool. Ladies, gentlemen, and those who fall in between or beyond, this was Cocktails on a Wednesday. I have no other name for it yet. It's, it's the, the X bar is down there. The bar, the X is silent in the bar. It's, it's bar with an X. It's a, it's a, anyway. Tonight, we created Floridita number 846, whose recipe I got from a stranger on the internet for a dollar. Technically, out of like the two dozen recipes I got from this guy, I, and I tipped a little bit, so about a dollar fifty. Whatever a dollar fifty is divided by like 24, a couple of cents. Gotta love that. Hump days are the best days for cocktails. Dude, we made it over the hump. I'd like to say like, like usually you would use that to like get into, like get into the hump, like to make your way over the hump, you have to do a little bit of drinking first, but no way, man. Once you get to the bottom of the hump, this is the best reward that you could possibly do for yourself. I love that. Party time, what is that? <laughs> I love that. He's got a little like mohawk thing going on. Mom said not to talk to strangers yet. How are we supposed to make friends? To be perfectly honest, how do you make friends if not to talk to strangers a little bit? And to be fair, I really didn't do much talking to this stranger. I found them on Reddit. They said, give me money for cocktails. I gave him money for cocktails and he sent me links to cocktails. Wasn't much talking going on there, but a little bit of communication, just enough communication to come out with this gem. Florida, I almost forgot to say the recipe again. Floridita, number 846. Two dashes of saline solution, salt and water. Three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of grapefruit juice. Quarter of an ounce or seven milliliters of elderflower liqueur. Quarter of an ounce or seven milliliters of maraschino liqueur. And one and a half ounces or 45 milliliters of mezcal. Your choice, mine was smoky and it totally paid off. Thank you, everybody. This has been fun. I like cocktail time. The next thing I'm gonna do is switch myself back over. It's gonna take me a little hot second. I only have one camera. I only have one good camera. So I have to take that camera and like turn it around and move it over here and do a little changing around. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. But we'll be on the other side of the desk, on the other side of the bar. Until next Wednesday, where we have another cocktail. I look forward to it. Oh my God, I've got so many cocktail ideas. And I have so many books. I love doing this. I just recently, the other day, told myself, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to stream every game in my Steam library. There's like over 300 of them. I don't even know if it's possible. Now I'm thinking to myself, like, maybe I should just tell myself I'm going to stream every single cocktail in my collection. <laughs> no. I don't think, I think I'd die if I tried to do that within my lifetime. I'd probably like, ugh, too much there. Anyway, thank you everybody so much. It's been wonderful so far. I'm not going away just yet. I'll just be passing the other side. We'll be switching to playing some Graveyard Keeper. It seems that I'll be learning how to bring forth the evilness from within tonight. It'll be great. One goal at a time, one goal at a time. Until then, I hope you all enjoy the parrots that are about to grace this screen. But if not, you know what? See you next time. Cheers to everybody. Until then, y'all. I think this is the right screen. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the other one. There we go. I changed all my things around. All right, until next time, y'all. Bye. Boop. You know, we can inject ourselves with dark stuff all we want to, but at least we'll have meat and beer. Oh, at least we'll have meat and beer. I don't think those are anything. They don't, they're never gonna change, and it's never gonna, never gonna change. Love to see that. All right, tomorrow I'm gonna ask the bishop if he knows anything about the dark arts and the dark hearts.
And if he doesn't, then whatever, dude. 